Welcome back to another Analyst Hour. I am Andrew Regan, joined by my co-host, Michael Goldsmith. And we have another co-host in the studio today. Uh, we have Ryan Cadigan, who has just been promoted to junior analyst. Uh, boys, the, the, the electric season is about to kick off. And, you know, kind of the inaugural maneuver we have to do as a league is, is that special draft that is coming up this week. Um, I asked you both to prepare your your mock drafts, and we are going to go through them today. Um, so before we hop into the specifics, um, Mike, what is the importance of the draft? I mean, look, even, you know, we have a lot of great players. That we probably have the most talented captain class we ever had, but no captain can do it on his own. He used to pick the right guys, surround himself with a squad that both is talented and complements his play, and that is the best way to get to the championship. Absolutely. Ryan, what's your take? What is the importance of the draft? Obviously, you know, you're you're gonna be a draft, you're gonna be get drafted this year, which is something that is completely foreign to you. You're usually to be on the other side of the wall. So, you know, what is the importance of the draft from a captain's perspective? Yeah, dude. I'm really excited for the draft. Um, I'm really excited to be on this side of it. Um, it's already been fun talking to some of the draftees and thinking of talking to some of the captains, stuff like that. So uh, I enjoy being on both sides of the draft. I think this year is going to be a ton of fun as a draftee for myself personally and wherever I end up going. Um, but specifically for this draft pool, I think depth is really going to matter this year. Um, so I'm really kind of excited to go through some of the different possibilities of team uh, kind of roster makeups uh, with you guys. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the importance of the draft really Obviously, it's important, but it varies based on the skill of the captain. Uh, for right. Costa, I think this draft is far more important than it is for Stephen Shaw. Um, and you made a great point, Michael, that in terms of captains, it is the most talented talented roster we've had. However, you you look deeper into this uh, the draftees. I, it is very apparent that we grew the middle class. That I really don't think that pick six and picks pick twenty two. Um, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference. Uh, so kind of tapping into your point as well, Ryan, um, it's going to be very important to draft, de uh, draft depth. And I think a lot of guys will have the opportunity to do so. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. We're going to take it uh, round for round. Um, we dropped on the Instagram today that we did fix the first two rounds. So uh, Costa will have pick one in uh, pick one in round one and round two, but he will have the final pick in round three. Um, so Legion and Costas and Zopolis have the first overall pick in round one. Mike, who do you think Costa is going to take? I think Costa is going to be faced with the choice between size uh, and talent. And not to say that Matt Schuerk and Ryan Cadigan aren't very talented, but the most talented player available is Louie. And though he does lack the size, his talent does outweigh that. His cost is the least talented captain. Objectively, he needs to get as much talent as he can, and Louis is the way to do that. And with his first pick, he's going to take Louis Galagani. All right. Ryan, who's yeah. going to take? Michael, I, I, won't, I won't go too much into it. I, I agree. Uh, I was surprised Louis wasn't even a captain this year. Uh, I think he's subbed a few times from what I remember a few summer leagues ago. And uh, he's – He's absolutely first overall quality, if not captain quality. So uh, excited to see the element he's going to bring to the league. And um, I think he'd be a good fit with Costa. Um, top three, top five is kind of deep, so we can, can't really go wrong. Yeah, I mentioned a few moments ago that the draft is going to be far more important than, to Costa than it will a lot of the other captains, which means right. he really has to make sure he hits every single round. And how does he hit in round one? taking Louis, Louis Galagani. I think any other choice is wrong. He is objectively the most skilled player in the draft and Casa is going to need him on his team. All right. We will hop in to the second overall pick, the Sizzlers. Mike, who are the Sizzlers taking? I think Connor Fu and the Sizzlers are going to take Ryan Cadigan with the second pick. I know he's had Matt Schuert the past two years, and they're both incredibly talented players, but they haven't had much playoff success together. Not that it's necessarily either of their individually faults, but Connor's got to change something up. You have a captain-level talent and Ryan dropping down, and he is the right pick for the Sizzlers at second overall. All right. Ryan, who do you have, Connor Fu, and the Sizzlers taking at pick number two? 
Yeah, I wasn't sure where Connor stood. Uh, I've talked to him a little bit, more just friend to friend. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who he's going to end up picking, but I ended up going with Matt Schuerk. It's a safe option. Uh, they really enjoy playing together. And uh, if they can get, you know, another quality guy in the second round, maybe this is their year. All right. Yeah, I, I think Connor's really at a crossroads. Um, he could draft his best friend, someone who is just as athletic as he is. Uh, they've shown that they can have success together when applied the right mindset and play style. Unfortunately, they do revert back to their terrible habits when the lights are bright and just living and dying by the three. Um, I hope Connor is smart enough not to jump ship on Matt Schuerk. No one can match their stamina. No one can match their athleticism. Um, and I think Matt Schuerk would be the right pick for him to take. And I see the Sizzlers taking Matt Schuerk at the second overall pick. Cool. All right. Next, we have the Seabirds, Nick Resendez and the Seabirds. Mike, who are they going to take at the third pick this year? Third overall pick, Nick Resendez is going to think he has himself a steal when he takes Matt Schuert to join his Seabirds team. Another former captain, best rebounder in the league, top three defender in the league, and can put the ball in the hoop. He does a bit of everything. He's a great pick, and even though he's three, it can be considered an early steal getting Matt Schuert here for the Seabirds. All right. Ryan, who do you have? Yeah. So in my mock draft, I know I'm still on the board here. Uh, for me, it was between myself and Carter. I know the league values Carter really highly as a big man. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of pieces Resendez is going to be looking for this year round. Uh, he can go down a couple different ra uh, routes of different skill sets that he wants to acquire. So I have Carter for now as he's probably the objectively, objectively highest rated big man. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, one thing captains really need to consider is attendance. And Carter was mature enough to to come forward and say, hey, I'm not going to be able to make as many games as I have in the past. I'm very curious to see if that's going to hurt his draft stock. Um, but he is really the shiniest object left for me in terms of what Resendez needs. So I also have Carter Brzezinski going to the Seabirds and Nick Resendez. Uh, he's an incredible rebounder, great basketball mind. He's also a guy you want to hang out with every week. So it definitely can't hurt. He's got a great locker room presence as well. I have third overall pick Carter Brzezinski to the to the to the Seabirds. Cool. All right. Next, we have Alex Pisacrita in the Phantom. Um, Alex Pisacrita is a notorious point guard with a very strong left hand. Mike, where do you think his head is at for the fourth overall pick in the draft? I think his head this year is going to be just where it was two years ago on Pegasus, where he will use his first round pick on Carter Brzezinski. Um, obviously. He, his pick and roll with Carter Brzezinski was incredible. Carter Brzezinski is not only tall, but he has really improved his game. I believe he was the most improved nominee the past two years. He's an excellent pick at the five spot. They complement each other very well, as they did two years ago. And Alex and the Phantom will be running it back with Carter Brzezinski. All right. Ryan. Um, I take. was in between myself and Carter, as I said, for the last pick. So now I have me going on the ladder here with Alex. I am. I imagine Alex is going to be looking for some sort of size. Obviously, I'm one of the stretch picks in the draft pool. So uh, I could see that working by fall before that, around that, wherever. Um, but Alex can't really go wrong. He's going to have a great year. Yeah, Ryan, we're in the same camp. I think, you know, Alex Pistacrita really needs two big things with his team. And that is going to be size and that is going to be shooting. So why why wouldn't he kill two birds with one stone and take Ryan Cadigan with the fourth overall pick in the draft. I think it'd be a perfect fit for him. Uh, I think they both have carried an incredible uh, competitive edge. Um, and those two together, I think, would be a great dynamic duo in the league that people wouldn't really expect. Totally. Let's keep things going. With the fifth overall pick in the ASL 2024 draft belongs to Nick Silva and the Black Bears. Ryan, we're going to switch it up a bit. Who are they taking? Let's do it. Yeah. So you really got to look at these situationally and look at, you know, who the captain's going to get. Uh, I like to think Silva's going to go after Cole again, um, try to repeat some of their success as Stampede, except maybe get over that hump like they couldn't uh, a few years ago. Uh, I think it'll be Cole. I think AJ is probably should be higher valued there. Uh, I'm just personally pretty high on AJ, though. I think he's pretty good in the first round. Uh, but no, I think it's going to be Cole. All right, Mike, what do you have to say? 
I completely agree. I mean, we know what they did two years ago on Stampede, making the finals, contending with Steve Shaw, nearly beating him. It would be, even though I think Pole is a bit of a reach here, not an egregious reach, a bit of a reach here for Nick Silva. He has to take him. He has to run it back. It got him to the finals once, and it can do it again. So Cold Shingers will in all likelihood be a black bear with Nick Silva. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to run around in circles with you guys. Uh, you pretty much said everything I was going to say, so I'll have to echo. It's going to be Cold Shingers at five. Um, if I were to put the house on one pick in this draft, uh, this would be one of those bets I would put the house on. Um, all right, Mike, we're going to shift back to you. Um, Jack Curtin had an incredible season last year. Um, I, I may have already mentioned that he would have been my vote for MVP had he not, uh, hurt his ankle. Um, so this year we're looking for kind of a redemption, right? And, uh, what better way to do that than put all your faith and invest in your first round pick? Who do you see as Jack Curtin's investment? this year one reason we know jack Curtin did have all that success i mean early on mvp front runner was because of how well he ran the pick and roll he needs a big man to compliment him and that big man for jack and the hoopers will be tyler trap but then not only will he be able to run his pick and roll as he did before he'll um tyler stretches the floor better than he might be the best pure stretch big in the league as far as i know and him and Curtin will complement each other very well. Curtin will get him in the right spots, and he will be lethal in that pick and roll, or even a pick and pop. So the Hoopers are going to go with Tyler Trapp here, even though it's a tough decision with Campbell on the board. Okay. Ryan? Yeah, for me, I think uh, Curtin doesn't really need to worry about any secondary scoring or handling or anything like that. Uh, he really can do everything. And what we saw before he went down last year was pretty incredible. So, um as a fan of the league, I'm really excited to see what he does with his team this year, hopefully for a fully healthy season. But uh, I'm going to go with AJ. I think Curtin is, uh, he's a wicked winner. And I think he's really going for it this year. I think there's a handful of captains that can really contend with Steven. And AJ has really shown that he has been um, part of pretty essential bones for successful teams in this league between playing with Colin and Steven in the past. So uh, I think Curtin's going to want some of that. I think that's a huge reason Costa got promoted as uh, captain because of the success that he had with Steven. And uh, I think in this league, you want to surround yourself with success. So I think AJ is a good pick here. Yeah, I think Jack had a lot of individual success as a player, but he's also incredible at uplifting those around him. Um, but I don't want it to be swept under the rug that he didn't have some help. Um, I think Carter is a big man with the brain, which was a perfect combination for Jack to use his athleticism and field general prowess so i'm looking at this board and maybe i'm not super confident in this pick is the sense of what i think jack will do uh, but i really hope that jack does it and i think it's what jack should do and big man with the brain it is aj clark at pick six um and i think that if jack does take that pick yeah uh, he will not regret it all right now we have the thunderbirds and call it kirkpatrick at seven mike who do you think the Thunderbirds will take with their first round pick. I mean, there are a lot of tempting choices on the board with AJ, as you guys just mentioned, Pat Arsh could steal another one from Steve and Campbell, and he's going to have to decide between those three. If the draft goes, as I've said, and I think he needs a big man to do all the dirty work for him, like excellent defense, set good screens, and just someone with, a, as you said, a, um, a big with the brain and that, in this case, I'm going to go with Campbell Prentice, who I think is another one of those. He was the defensive player of the year last year for a reason, adapted the league incredibly quickly, played incredibly smart alongside Nick Resendez. He'll be a great supporting piece for Colin, and Colin should consider himself lucky to complement his Thunderbird duo with Campbell Prentice. Yeah, I think that's a great take, Mike. Um, I have him going slightly different. I think Colin's like friends with Tyler Trapp. Uh, I still have him available in my current mock draft, so I got Tyler to Colin. They're friends. There's chemistry, both ballers, good wing players, kind of. Uh, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Colin actually did partake in uh, partially recruiting Tyler to the league. Um, I also have him available on my on my draft board. So I think it's pretty uh, set in stone. Tyler Trapp will be a Thunderbird in a few weeks time. Um, even though Colin plays very similar to a guard, he does have some height to himself. You know, I think he's like 6'1", 6'2". Tyler Trapp, I think, is listed as 6'3". They can have their own little twin tower duo 
uh, but also with the agility that, you know, a guard would have. And I think they will be a dangerous duo um, come May. Totally. All right. But the final pick in the first round, uh, Stephen Shaw and the Dogs. Um, Is there any other option? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't option. think there's, 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 there's much that needs to be said here. We all have Pat, yeah. I'm assuming, right? Mike, Mike how about yeah. you speak for us or Andrew? Yeah, it's going to be Pat. Yeah. I don't think there's too much analysis that needs to be had between that one. So, um, I will say though, before we go to the next one, I am really excited to see Stephen and Pat's dynamic with this new semi new draft order and to see how that dynamic goes with now back of the second round, beginning of third round talent. Uh, to see yeah. what he can pick up. Yeah. Hopefully, they, they don't gonna have to run the show. But, um, so there are three of us in the studio. But I have some news that uh, we were sent an anonymous mock draft. Um, and I just want to give this person some flowers and read their picks. And I would love to get all of our takeaways um, upon reading this. So this, this anonymous analyst has Louis at one, Cadigan at two, Shurk at three, Trap at four, Chingris at five, Brzezinski at six, Tavares at seven, and Pat at eight. Mike, what are your initial takeaways of that first round? I mean, I think Trap is going alarmingly high for a rookie that, I mean, some people have seen him play, and I'm sure he is a great player. I don't have him going too much lower. I think that's a pretty high pick for Trap. I also think... Um, I heard Dennis in there, and Dennis is an excellent defensive talent, but I think typically utility defensive guys tend to go late in the second round more so than being a top six pick. I mean, I we were um, we agreed on the first four, and obviously on Cole and Pat, but um, yeah, I, I think Dennis and Tyler Trapp are going a little high there. I yeah. don't necessarily dislike the names I heard there, but did I not hear Carter on that list? Carter, uh, this guy or girl has <laughs> Carter <laughs> going to Curtin at uh, at six. Oh, okay. Run yeah, no, back. that's interesting. I, I, you know, I think uh, the first half of the second round, that your your uh, your Dennis's, your Campbell's, your Andrews, etc. Like, I think these are guys that can go first. It's again, it's all going to come down to preference of captain and kind of what their team is currently built like. Yeah, I mean, my initial takeaways is I I see two big reaches, and I, I see trap at at four. I think is a little is a little bit of a reach. Um, I think I think he is like a late first round, early second round guy. Um, so having him going four is is, is crazy. Um, but especially when you still have Carter on the board or you have Campbell on the board. Um, and I also see, you know, Tavares in round one. Uh, Tavares is a guy that I don't think you should. I don't want to say waste, but put your first round pick on. Um, he is a great street baller, but he's a great street baller that you can get in the second round. So, you know, the formula has kind of been the same. It's it's talent and value and one utility and two, and then, you know, whoever best suits the team at three, but that's usually been the formula. You know, you get your, your skill and one uh, round one, your utility in round two, and then whatever you're missing in round three. Um, but yeah, so, I thought that was a little fun thing for us. Um, we'll come back at the end of each round and we will kind of go through and give our takeaways and opinions on the synonymous analysts mock draft. I'm curious. I'm very yeah. curious who this is. Yeah. Let's uh let's head over to round two. Remember, it is the same order. So Costa and the Legion. Um, who are they taking, Michael, with their first pick? Well, I want to rotate who why don't you pick first this time? You pick last yeah. every time. Oh, you guys are just too, too <laughs> um i think costa is incredibly public on who he's gunning for in round two so i really don't want to talk about it too much i have george kim boris going to the legion with pick one in round two and there's nothing wrong with that um the only thing i will say though is in the reason sorry to cut you off andrew but i have george going there as well um, obviously I know they're like best friends and want to play together. The only thing I will say to that is I have a few guys, uh, in my mock draft now going after George that were drafted before him in previous seasons. Uh, I think Costa 
I think he's got to hold on to one if he wants a chance at Louis. I think Louis is pretty clearly the best player in the league. I I just like I I just have memories memories of him just absolutely like cooking and pick up or something. So I'm actually really scared to see Louis in the league, but excited to see what team he ends up on. Uh, that being said, if Costa really wants Louis, I think he'll have to concede and take George at two if he wants to keep that. But otherwise, if I were him, I would entertain the thoughts of potentially trading his draft assets, getting into a position a little more favorable where he knows he can still get George, but potentially maximize those first and third round picks. Um, I'm excited to see what he does. I was obviously a very active trader as a captain, so uh, excited to see what the rest of the guys are going to do, but that's how I see it right now. Yeah, let me hop in there real quick before we hand the mic over to Michael. Um, I think if he wants to get Louie, he should not trade his picks. Um, Louie should get scooped up right away. However, if he's in a situation where he is gung-ho on getting a big man um, and he's say he's gung-ho on getting you, Ryan, I think it is absolutely worth trading his his picks because he could still get George in you know mid-round two, uh, boost his third-round pick, and get you, you know, say – at two or three in round one. So I think if he's going for you, he should trade. If he's very set on taking Louie, which I think he should be, I would, I would say keep the same. Mike. Totally well, I just want to add to this, this. I just want to, I mean, obviously I haven't taken George to the whole, it's the, the biggest unkept secret in the league, but yeah. what I think if we're talking about this trade, he also Costa could realistically just forget the first round pick. He holds on to the number one pick. He trades down maybe two or three slots in the second round and in return would trade up in the third round if he does a second and third round pick slot with someone. I think that's his best bet. Now, obviously, you don't want to go too far down and risk someone else poaching George because George is a lot better of a player than he was able to show last season. But I think if he could do a second and third round pick swap, one of these captains that aren't too far below him, he has to pounce on that and upgrade and get a better fourth man alongside George. Yeah, I really, I think that's, that is best case scenario. I'm also very curious to see if these captains almost take a defensive approach and say, all right, if we're going to trade, I want to, I want to take a stab at your first overall pick. Um, I'm not confident enough in my first round pick. I want the opportunity to draft first. So I, I want to see if they almost kind of fight fire with fire with that, but you're right in Costa's world, best case scenario, keep the first uh, overall pick and then toy around with two and three really like that take. All right. We have the Sizzlers with the second pick in the second round. Um, just, for, you know, a little clarity. I have Shuark going to the Sizzlers. So I have right now yeah. Connor and Shuark. Um, Connor, obviously, is a three-point shooter. He's very trigger happy with his shots. Um, I'm really looking forward to him focusing on driving this year if he chooses to do that. Um, but if he's if he's not, let's get another big man in there. I think Campbell Prentice would be a great selection for him. Um, he's a guy that can stretch the floor a bit alongside Connor and Shuark. Uh, he's also a guy, he, I mean, he is the reigning deep boy. We know Connor and Matt are defensive weapons. I think they can finish this trifecta and have the best defensive team in the league with Connor, Shuark, and Prentice. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, honestly, you make a good point. You like make me want to change my answer. Uh, I, uh, I have Dennis going here, which I also don't think is a bad answer. Um, I know Connor and Dennis are friends. I, uh, was a personal huge fan of Dennis's performance last season. And, uh, I really would love to see Dennis kind of get a fair shake on a, on a contender team this year. And, uh, I think this could be the year for Connor to do it. So I got Dennis second in the second round. Yeah, I think those are both great takes. I think we're all in the same mindset that he's going to draft a defender or a big man. And I have him taking both. And that is AJ Clark, who I still have available. I think it's the best of the, the best utility man you could possibly get. And that would be alongside a Sizzlers team on our food and Ryan Cadigan in my draft. That would be an incredible trio. You're not missing really anything there. He covers all your bases in terms of, you know, you have the two scores and then AJ compliments it with the dirty work screen setting rebounding defender. I think AJ Clark going to the Sizzlers here would be an excellent pick. All right. Um, now we can hop over to the Seabirds with the third pick in the second round. I see Nick Resendez in the draft room being up in arms when Campbell gets scooped up because uh, I have Connor taking him just one pick before Nick is able to run it back. Um, and he's going to sit there and say, all right, well, who can I get that is as close to Campbell as possible that is left on this draft board? And his finger is going to go right down and select 
Dennis Tavares with the third pick in the second round. Yep. I got Campbell for, uh, he's kind of the last big I had available there that we were talking about. Uh, not reading this back, I think Campbell probably should go higher. He had an insane year last year. So uh, that would be a great pickup for Nick. Yeah, and I, I think this is a bit of a reach here, but I think when you look at the team, if Nick if Nick Resendez ends up with Matt Schuwerk on the Seabirds, he, he really needs shooting because they both bring a lot to the game. Neither are pure shooters. This is a reach, but the best shooter available is Dan Gerges. I believe him and Nick has some chemistry off the court. Maybe they could bring it together on the court. That would that, that trio would have everything you need with a shooter like Dan. And for that reason, I have Nick taking a knowing reach on Dan Gerges. All right. Okay. Next, we have Alex Pisacrita in Phantom. For uh, for context, I have Alex Pisacrita taking Ryan Caddy in the first round. Um, you know, he has, you know, speed in himself. He's got a stretch big in Ryan. Um, and he really is going to feel like he has all of his bases covered. So he can really kind of draft with his heart right now. Um, looking at the board, he wants a guy that he already knows what he's capable of, already knows what chemistry they have. And with the selections left at this appropriate time, I think Alex Pisacrita is going to land on Arvin Nunez with the fourth pick in the second round. Interesting. Well, I uh, I agree with a lot of your sentiments of what I think he's going to be looking for. I also have him taking me in the first round. Uh, so that's another reason why I think he'll be taking you, Andrew. And uh, I think you kind of have proven over the last couple of seasons, especially with the Billies with us last year, um, you were great at taking up the ball, controlling the controlling the point guard position if you want it, if Alex wants to come off the ball or vice versa. Um, I think that's going to be good versatility to have. Obviously, the defense and uh, hustle plays that you make are another reason why I rate you so highly. But yeah, I think me, you, and Alex would be fun. And I think for the context of this current mock draft makes sense. Yeah, I had Alex taking Carter Brzezinski in the first round. You know, he had... He ran it with Carter Brzezinski on Pegasus in the past. And last season, he had a great win to compliment him, and that was Arvin Nunez. He needs some shooting. That's what Arvin brings. He needs a wing. He needs a defender. Arvin checks all the boxes of what Alex needs here and what the few deficiencies that him and Carter would have. Arvin comes in and fills them for his phantom team. And for that reason, I think he runs it back, as I said, with Carter from Pegasus and Arvin Nunez from the pack. All right. Now we have the Black Bears at the fifth pick in the second round. Um, obviously, Nick Silva found a lot of success with Cole Chingris at his side, um, but he also found a lot of success with this guy coming off the bench, being the spark plug. Um, so why would he shy away? I think he's going to take Dan Gurgis. It's going to give him the shooting they need because they pretty much have everything else covered. Um, I think Dan Gurgis is an incredibly intelligent and smart pick in this position. And I see Dan Gerges suiting up as a black bear this year. Not much to say. I agree. Have the same mentality as you there. Um, well, I already had Dan off my board. So I think the black bear is going to look at this. They have Cole Chingris already. Dennis Tavares is still there. Picture a trio of Nick Silva, Cole Chingris, and Dennis Tavares. That could arguably be the best defensive team in ASL history, and I think Nick Silva will see that. He'll pounce on opportunity and take Dennis for the Black Bears. All right. We're getting close to rounding out the second round, but there's still three picks to go. Uh, Jack Curtin in the Hoopers, for context, I have taking A.J. Clark in the first round. So, you know, kind of looking at all those things, Jack really enjoyed kind of running the Twin Towers last year with Carter and Cole. I think he's going to you know, try to translate that strategy this year because he found so much success last year. Looking at the board, I know seeing an R next to someone's name can be a little bit scary. You don't know what they bring to the table, but just looking at his build, I think CJ Puglisi will complete that, you know, Hatamoto's part two twin towers now going to be the Hoopers. And I think CJ Puglisi will go at the sixth pick in the second round and become a Hooper. Yeah, man, there are, um, some really valuable people in my eyes on uh, kind of the end of this round, beginning of third round that you could really argue could fluctuate and where they get picked. CJ is one of those guys. I got to play against him a little bit this fall. Um, I really like him as a player and I could totally see uh, Jack picking him with everyone who's currently left on the board. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with CJ. 
Yep. I mean, and now to don't have much more to add. I also have Jack taking CJ here. You know, the Hoopers with Jack and I had him taking Tyler Trout would have the shooting. They have the playmaking. They need that gritty utility defender. A lot, I've been saying that a lot for a lot of teams after the first round selections. The Hoopers apply and CJ will fill the holes and will be a great pick for the Hoopers here uh, nearing the end of the second round. All right. Now we have Colin Kirkpatrick and the Thunderbirds. For context, I have Tyler Trapp being the first round selection of the Thunderbirds. So Colin knows that he is able to scoop up size and scoring. Um, you know, what does he need left? He needs someone who can defend and someone who can pass. And also, I think when you play with Colin, you got to know to get the F out of his way when he wants to go off. Um, looking at the board, who is that? Who is that guy? I think it is myself. I have played with him before. Um, I think he has faith in my defense. I also and I led the league in assists that year. Um, so he knows what I'm capable of. And I hope he knows that I get the F out of his way when he wants to go off. Um, so with that said, I think I'm the missing puzzle piece for the Thunderbirds at the seventh pick in the second round. Um, yeah, that you make good points, Andrew. I don't have you available at this point. Um, I, I don't think you're a second to last second round player. If you were to fall, I mean, Colin would be stupid not to take you. I currently have him taking Arvin, who I still have available on mine with Tyler Trapp, his first round pick. However, I don't know where things stand between Arvin and Colin. I know, uh, was he on Super Pandas with you guys or Caddyshack? It was Super Pandas. Uh, Panda. Yeah, so I, I know there were some shortcomings there. I don't, I don't know what that chemistry or kind of desire to maybe partner up again looks like for Colin and Arvin, but uh, for kind of best talent available and playing history in the past, uh, I think Arvin makes sense for this one. Yeah, um, I also had Andrew falling here on my board. I think Colin, you know, he needs a true point guard taking, having himself, having I had Campbell in the first round, maybe he'll end up with Tyler. Regardless, he needs a point guard at this spot. He needs a defender at this spot. Andrew can play make like any point guard and defend like any point guard. And he would fit in great with Thunderbirds here and Colin will be satisfied taking Andrew with the second last pick in the second round. All right. Uh, another thing I hope Colin realizes is that Colin needs to get guys to buy in. Who better to get bought in than drafting the commissioner and founder of the league? <laughs> <laughs> um, Where do you right. think Andrew wants to go, Mike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be flattered. I would be flattered. Um, all right. <laughs> The final pick in the second round, the dogs. Uh, drafting doesn't really matter for Steven at this point. He got he got Pat. He got his little Pat. They're going to be happy. They're going to be frolicking all over the court. Um, so I think he's going to be looking for a good presence and also a guy that he's not a, afraid to kind of just throw on whoever has the ball if need be. Uh, looking at who's left, I think Nick Germano is the perfect pick and the perfect fit for the dogs to round out the second round. MG, you want this one? Sure, sure. I mean, it's not much different than what Andrew said. I think I also have been taking Nick Germano. Um, I know the, the famous trio in this league was the Shaw, Archambo, AJ Clark trio. I think Nick Germano is probably a slightly less version, slightly worse version of AJ Clark, but at this spot, it's a great value pick. He brings good defense. Um, everyone hates being guarded by him, and I think it's a great pick to round out the second round for Steve Shaw and the Dogs. So, fellas, I... um. There's really one name in while I was going through this draft, there was really one position where I was like, whoa, I don't want this to happen. Or this is something crazy that I don't think a lot of people would see coming. And that is, I have Justin and Buru going at the end of this second round. Um, whoa. Yeah. I was able to play with Justin a little bit over the fall. Um, I know some guys in the league play pickup with him here and there. Uh, if he was more well-known around the league and he had had some league, uh, uh, history playing I think we'd be seeing him go way higher in the second round uh, he's a great off ball player he can create for himself and he will show up and really really loves playing um, I think if you get a guy like this that has some serious offensive potential with a guy like Steven uh, the league could really regret that as a third scoring option and I hope that someone would pick him up in uh, before that but uh, it would be remiss of me if I did not think Steve would or should get Justin with these back-to-back -back picks. All right. I really like that. Um, I have Justin obviously going in the third round and 
Um, I'm excited to talk about him as well. Cause I think he definitely has an asterisk next to his name in my book. Yeah. Um, and well, and since Steven's back to back, uh, if it helps, I have Nick Germano going in that beginning of third, you could flip flop it, whatever it is, but I think Justin and Nick, uh, would really round off Steven's roster with Pat. All right, guys, are you ready for the anonymous analysts round two mock draft? Yes. Yeah, let's hear it. All right. This person has Comboris going to Legion. He has Arvin Nunez going to the Sizzlers. He has Campbell Prentice going to the Seabirds. He has AJ Clark going to the Phantom. He has Gurgis going to the Black Bears. He has Regan going to the Hoopers. He has Baraldi going to the Thunderbirds. And he has Germano going to the Dogs. Um, initial takeaways. Go ahead. I don't know how you let AJ Clark fall that far. I mean, he's been and he's been a first round pick for a while. I think I haven't gone to the top of the second round, but I was waiting to hear his name for like three consecutive picks, and he really had him falling. That was the one that really jumped off the page for me. Yeah, yeah. I don't really remember the other stuff you saw, but or you said, but AJ was the one that stuck out to me. Yeah, I think AJ going that low is kind of ridiculous. Um, Kind of looking at everything else. Uh, it Yeah, it, I mean, it's very, very similar to our first round. Baraldi's in the second round, which is something none of us had. Um, oh, yeah. So something worth talking about. A bit of a, a I think a bit of a reach. Um, but Baraldi's absolutely an asset. I mean, he just cleaned house when it came to awards last year. Um, yeah, what did he win last year? Fourth man and most improved? And most improved. Yep. Wow. Like, yeah, I, he had like nine noms under his belt before then. So he finally totally, totally justified to be a second round pick this just year. Just looking at this, I mean, me going to Curtin, I would love to go to Curtin. I would love to play with him. Um, but yeah, I think the I think the two things that stand out of this would be Clark falling that low, I think is ridiculous. And uh Beraldi, I don't think is a horrible pick, but second round, um, I think that's a guy you can kind of pay you can be a little bit more patient on, if that makes sense. Yep. All right. Let's head over to the third and final round. These are where legends are forged. Um, third round is incredibly important. You guys have came forward and said they're not going to be able to make it this year for inter- like a few weeks. They're not going to be able to play as much as they'd like to, which means the value of your fourth man has just skyrocketed. So I hope captains really don't look over this selection. It is incredibly important to draft a guy who can kind of mold anywhere, shows up, and is going to get, you know, be very comfortable doing the grunt work. You don't want to draft a one-dimensional guy. Luckily, there's not a lot of one-dimensional people in this round. So let's let's go right into it. Uh, Ryan, I don't think you kicked us off. You actually, yeah, had, you I, 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 I mentioned line. end of last round. I had Justin and Germano back to back. I don't I don't know who will choose first or second there, but uh, I think it's a good good pairing for Steve. All right, I have. Uh, I don't want to call it a charity pick. Because in terms of where this player is, in my eyes, being drafted, I think it is completely appropriate. But what I say charity pick, I mean is I think this this uh, Steve is willing to do this guy a favor. This guy is notorious for losing in the finals. Um, he even has a nickname coined to go with him for this phenomenon. Um, however, <laughs> I think this player, if you were to look at the stat book, in the history books is the winningest player in ASL history in terms of total games. Unfortunately, not championships. I'll stop rambling. I have Stephen Shaw taking Ian Hale with the first pick in the wow. first and wow. I think that would be a great pick. I think he'd hit a gold mine. Wow. Yeah, that 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 is a hot take, but I like it, and maybe that would um, allow the curse to be broken. We'll see. I don't know if Stephen we wants to, to see. put that on his shoulder. The yeah, goat the world. Stronger. Yeah, stronger. literally, I was just going to say. Is that, is... <laughs> that would be, yeah. That would be, uh, yeah. Um, that would be funny. I do not have, I do not agree with you there. I think Steve is going to look at this, and Ian is a very talented player, but he's not the most talented player available. And who I'm talking about after all these seasons finally got his well deserved recognition last season. Mostly, or a lot in part, to Nick Resendez creating an excellent system where he could flourish. And this is Tyler Baraldi to lead off the third round. All right. Next, we have Colin and the Thunderbirds. Ryan, who are they taking with their final pick in the draft? I mean, at this point, you got you got to assume that Colin's bought in on getting it done with Ian. Uh, so I, it's got to be Ian. Uh, 
I think Ian loves playing for Colin. I think at this point, Colin loves playing with Ian. Um, and for Ian's sake, as a friend, I, I want to see some serious success from him this season. So uh, hopefully he gets to another finals and uh, hopefully I'm not there to ruin it for him. But I hope if not, he does get one. So Ian and Colin are going to run it back and I wish them the best of luck this year. All right. Again, th again, this might be called a hot take. I think Colin's going to be looking for a guy again, to kind of do the dirty work, not take away shots from the other guys. Looking at the board, there's one person for that, and that is Owen Bollinger. Uh, we've talked about it before. I don't know who said this term, so if you do, please let me know. Um, he is the best pound-for-pound -pound rebounder in the league. Uh, the guy is scrappy. He you know, steals possessions, maintains possessions. I think he's the right pick, um, and I see him suiting up as a Thunderbird come May. Yeah, and I still do have Ian available on my draft board, but – I don't know how sentimental Colin is. I don't know how afraid he is of this curse or whatsoever, but I think he just wants a change of scenery at this point. I think both of them want a change of scenery. Not that it's either one of their fault necessarily. It's not Ian's fault that they lost those titles. That being said, I don't need to add much to what you said on it, but I think he takes Owen Bollinger. You're getting a top five rebounder, someone who busts his ass to every possession and does not take a lot of shots, which I'm sure Colin wouldn't mind too much coming from a fourth man anyway, so... All right. Now we have Jack Curtin and the Hoopers. Ryan, who is he taking? Yeah, so I somehow still have Veraldi available. So obviously him clearing house with the awards last year. I think he's really bought in. I think Curtin's really bought in. I think they'd be a great pairing. Um, and if he's still available, Veraldi would be great on the Hoopers. Hoopers, yes. Um, I'm in the same camp as you. I think Tyler Veraldi is the best pick. Um I think Curtin really enjoyed having Germano as his fourth man last year. Um, Mikey made a great point last episode that he had, you know, always had fresh legs out there. Uh, but as good as Nick Germano is, he doesn't have a forte for scoring. And I think that's exactly what Baraldi is able to bring. And I think, you know, Jack will be able to reap the benefits of, you know, Baraldi's improvement, um, almost leadership, scrappiness, and finally scoring. Yeah, I think for me, Jack Curtin and the Hoopers are going to be looking at this board. They're going to want – they have everything they need to contend. They just want to take the most talented fourth man left. And this is someone who has improved his game year after year. It was the ASL's first ever most improved player. That is Ian Hale. He belong. He honestly could have gone a little earlier, but he. this is a good spot for him. I think Jack would use him excellently well, as Colin has the past few years, and I think they would both – very much benefit from, benefit from this pick. So for that reason, I have Jack and the Hoopers taking Ian as their fourth man. Perfect. Great point, Michael. Um, now we obviously have Nick Silva and the Black Bears. They have the fourth pick in the final round. Uh, who is going to be, <laughs> Ryan, who are the Black Bears going to take for their fourth man at the fourth pick? Uh, so I currently have it as Cole uh Gerges and I have Luke going third was that the exact same team as Stampede no uh Costa Gerges was actually the fourth oh, wow pick. that's a deep team man very deep uh, team. uh yeah but anyways I have Luke um I really want to see Luke get a fair shake at a fourth man role Connor barely played him last year I would hate to be a fourth man on Connor's team he just does not play his bench players ever um I hope Luke can get some real minutes with Nick and uh, I, I think they're friends in real life. And as everyone knows, on a you know st street ball league note aside, Luke has lost like a ton of weight, and he's like been grinding. I know, and I just think I want to see what the new look Luke looks like with consistent minutes and a consistent role. And uh, I think he's like really like literally positionally changed. So I uh, that's a transformation. I'm curious. I'm following up on this season, but yeah, I have him with Nick. Yeah, I also have Luke going um, to the Black Bears. It is no, you know, it's obviously no uh, secret that Luke has lost a ton of weight. We're expecting a more low, uh, more mobile, agile, and athletic Luke Pratty this year. And I have him going to the Black Bears, and I think they will definitely not regret that take. Yeah, I think the Black Bears have a really tough decision on their hands, but I still have a your point guard available on my board, another defensive point guard who I think is falling lower than his stock, but because of a rookie, that's what's going to happen. I have the Black Bear taking Justin and Buru, and I think he will fit in great 
with uh, with what I have as Nick, Cole, and Dennis. They need a true point guard. He brings that, and I think next year he will be a second-round draft pick. All but, right. All right, Ryan. Now we have Alex Pizzacrita and the Phantom. Who are they taken with round uh, pick five and round three? Yeah, I have Alex running it back with uh, Owen Bollinger. I don't have him taken yet. Uh, I loved playing against Owen when he was on the pack. And I remember everything that's been said about him is true with his rebounding, his hustle plays, and uh, almost like a Derek White vibe, like kind of under the radar, but he's always efficient in the right spots. So uh, I think they're going to run it back. I think it'll be a great uh, player for Alex to round off his bench and uh, should be a good season for him. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... This is a special player that I said last round. I'm going to have an asterisk next to his name. I have Alex Pisacrita striking gold with taking Justin Mburu, um with the fifth pick in the third round. I think Justin Mburu is a second-round talent. Um, he's incredibly driven, motivated, um, and also just skilled. But I think you know not many people knowing much about him, seeing an R next to his name. I think a lot of teams are kind of, kind of try to stay away from him. And I think Alex Pisacrita is going to have no choice but to draft him just hearing what we're saying right now. Um, and I think it's going to be the probably the best value pick in the whole draft. Yeah, I have Alex Pisacrita first taking Carter, then taking Arvin. They really have almost everything except a pure shooter, which I believe I am. And I would fit in well as a fourth man there to complement what they already have, which is a little bit of everything. And I think I'd stretch the floor well there and would be a good pick for Alex Frida and the Phantom. All right. Down to our final three picks. We have Nick Resendez and the Seabirds. Ryan, who are they taking? Yeah, so for context, I currently have Nick with Campbell and Carter. So they're running like the serious uh, kind of twin tower action. Uh, I think they're going to they're gonna need some sort of corner shooter to uh, space the floor. I still have MG available. Mike, I think you should be going way higher than third to last, but uh, that's just the captain in me talking. You're like great to play with, always know where to be, uh, can give us some really hot shooting games and uh, <clears throat> have really developed defensively over the years. So uh, I think you'll be great with Nick and I think Nick is potentially going to do something special this year. So uh, I think that'd be a good pick for him at that point in the draft. Yeah. Great, great take. Um, I have Nick with Carter and Dennis. Uh, pretty much same position. I think they're going to need a guy to check in, hit a three or two, check out. Um, and honestly, I hope, you know, Nick is smart enough, if available, to take Michael Goldsmith with the sixth pick in the third round. Um, I know you gave Connor Fu a little flack for the, his lack of playing for fourth man, but on the complete opposite side, I think a fourth man's dream is to go to Nick Resendez. Uh, Michael is definitely not shy to take the three. Uh, Michael, you know, whenever there's an opportunity to take a shot, he will find it and he will have many opportunities as a seabird to take his shots. Right. Well, I'm flattered guys. And yeah, we are, New York guys are not wrong that, Coming from a fourth man's perspective, Nick Resendez is a fourth man's wet dream. Everyone wants to play there after what he did with Tyler last year and maximizing his potential off the bench. So that is no secret. However, I have been taking someone who likely could have went earlier but didn't really flourish in the system he was in last year. He has transformed himself both on and off the court, and he's a great asset to a team and probably a bit of a steal here. I have Nick Resendez and the Seabirds taking Luke Pratty. And I think he's going to bring, um, he, he, he is a better shooter than he gets credit for. He moves well now um, given his transformation. And I think he'd be a great pick for Nick in the spot. Love it. Great. Uh, the Sizzlers with the seventh pick in the third round. Ryan, who are they scooping up? Yeah. So <clears throat> I have them taking this new kid, Jesse Finn. Um, I think, with Pete in, you know, going between Pete and Jesse, I think Pete with the Hellkites last year, uh, Hellkites unfortunately were uh, kind of in the headlines all of last season for the wrong reasons. Uh, couldn't really put it together. Um, kind of a down year for them. I love Pete's passion for the game. I think uh, I, another thing I was thinking about is like, I want to see Pete on a team that isn't Steve Shaw and isn't, you know, this like dumpster fire from last year of the Hellkites and all the struggles that they had been facing. So 
Um, I think, I think this kid, Jesse, you know, a captain will take the risk on him. I don't know too much about him other than like, you know, good build and should be a decent player. But uh, I think that, you know, with that said, Connor will probably take the risk on that. And I think Costa will end up with Pete last, but uh, that being said, I think Pete definitely feels like he has something to prove this year. And uh, all of these teams seem pretty well-rounded. So uh, everyone really has a chance to kind of build their legacy this year. Yeah, for the Sizzlers, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I don't want to expose him pre-draft night, but Jesse, you know, ex pretty much explained to me, hey, I'm a 6'2", scrappy rebounder who is pass first and looks to get it to the best shooter available. I think once Connor Fu hears that, he's going to say, hey, welcome to the team. I think that is uh, going to perfectly fit his play style, um, which means obviously I have Pete Silos going to the Legion. Um I think Costa is going to be a great environment for, for Pete. I think Pete is going to have a, a plane to experiment with his game. He's going to get a lot of minutes. I assume uh, we haven't seen Costa run his rotations, but I don't see any reason to believe that Pete will be a great fit for Costa in the Legion. Yeah, I would completely agree with both of you guys. Um, I think Jesse, you know, first of all, being six, two scrappy rebounder team first guy from what it sounds like that jumps off the page and, Obviously, I don't think any of the Hellkites last season came out looking great and probably heard all their draft stock. And Pete is no different there. I don't think Pete played up to his potential. And I think he'd be the first to say that. And I do have Jesse going to the Sizzlers and Pete going to Legion. But I do think that Pete brings a lot to a lot more to a team than he was able to show, as I said. And I'm excited to see him in a system where I can't see Costa being stingy with his fourth man minutes. I think this is going to allow Pete to be more confident, to flourish, not be out there, and think that he has to shoot it every time he gets it because he did have so, so many limited minutes. So I think Connor getting Jesse and Costa getting Pete will be great for both of them. All right. And then our final little part, the anonymous analyst has submitted his, uh, his third-round pick. He has Bollinger going to Steven. That's a scary thought. Hale going to the Thunderbirds. Puglisi going to the Hoopers. Pratty going to the Black Bears. Iburu going to Phantom. Jesse Finn going to the Seabirds. Goldsmith going to the Sizzlers. And Stylos going to the Legion. Um, so what are our initial takeaways from that? Yeah, the the thing that struck me the most was CJ somehow like third in the third round. I I have him almost in the first half of the second round. I have him just over in the second half of the second round. But uh, yeah, other than that, it seems pretty standard to me. Uh, you had mentioned Owen Bollinger and uh, kind of him with Steve. That's a scary thought. Uh, but other than that, I think CJ should go second. Everything else makes sense. Yeah. I yeah. think CJ going in the third round is ludicrous, and I'll close that door there. You're up, Mike. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the CJ thing really jumped off the page, and I think Steve Shaw getting one of the best role players in the league with Owen would also be pretty scary, which I am available to do in mine. So I agree with you guys there. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. I very much appreciate your time coming in the studio today, um, and we will sign off, and we'll see you next time. Next time we're talking, um, we will know our teams for the 2024 season. Wow. All right. See you guys. Thanks.